Good morning. My name is Mark Donaghy. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing at Baptist Photonics. I'd like to welcome you to Photonics West 2021 to the digital marketplace. I'm going to spend some time telling you about my company Raptor Photonics and then focus on the subject of short wave infrared. I will discuss why this wavelength is becoming more interesting to a range of applications, some new and novel. I will discuss a range of square cameras and then go on to share some applications where our square cameras are being used. To begin my presentation, I would like to give you a brief introduction to Raptor Photonics. We're a UK company and we design and manufacture a range of high-end scientific digital cameras for a range of applications. Everything is designed and manufactured in a head office facility in the UK. Our company was set up in 2006 and in 2018 we set up Raptor Photonics Incorporated in the US to serve and support our customers in North America. We also work with our channel partners around the world, the details for which you can find on our website. Raptor uses a range of sensors on our cameras, including CCD, EM CCD, CMOS and SWIR. We are world leaders in the design of ultra-sensitive scientific cameras, which have low noise, high QE and vacuum deep cool technology. Our cameras are well designed, compact and sturdy, delivering high performance in terms of sensitivity, speed, dynamic range, QE, as well as reliability and good pricing. We have won several awards for our quality and innovation, most recently a gold medal innovation award from Laser Focus World for our IL-1280 Square Camera. We have customers all over the world using our cameras and solutions to solve their imaging and detection requirements. We sell to national labs, universities, research facilities, as well as instrumentation companies and OEMs. Raptor has a new corporate video, which you can watch on the digital marketplace on our booth. As you can see in the video, Raptor has a very modern, purpose-built facility where we design and manufacture our cameras. We have a team of R&D scientists and engineers with experience in optical design, firmware, mechanical and electronic layouts. Our facility is 6,000 square feet with our own clean room and vacuum pump technology. We adhere to the highest quality standards. Everything is designed to ISO 9001-2015 and we use high quality components across our cameras, meaning that they are very reliable with very low, level, low levels of return. We also have a team of support engineers to deal with the customer inquiries and any issues they may have, both pre-sales and post-sales. Raptor cameras and detectors cover a wide range of energies and wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum. Everything from high energy x-ray to short wave infrared at 1.7 microns. We use a range of sensors including CCD, EMCCD, CMOS and NGAS. For this presentation, I'll be focusing on both visible SWIR from 600 to 1700 nanometers and SWIR from 900 to 1700 nanometers. I'd like to briefly introduce the in-gas focal plane array detector and its structure. A typical in-gas sensor is essentially a CMOS sensor along with a ROIC, which has an in-gas layer attached using indium bump bonds, but will then have an AR coating. A typical SWIR sensor will offer QE from 900 to 1700 nanometers. In this particular QE curve, this is essentially for a visible SWIR in gas detector. This is where the sensor is back thin. This will offer sensitivity from 600 to 1700 nanometers. As you can see at 600, the QE is about 40% and it goes up to about just over 90% between 12 and 1300 nanometers and then it falls very quickly away from 1700 onwards. Okay, let's turn to the subject of cooling. You can see the effects of reducing sensor temperature on an in-gas sensor in this slide, dropping from plus 30 degrees to minus 30 degrees. The quality of image significantly improves as the dark current is reduced. The effects of the dark current image can be visualized by comparing the frames of equal exposure times acquired at different sensor temperatures. The image on the right shows a histogram plot of 100 milliseconds. 
dark frame taken at two different sensor temperatures in high gain mode. Raptor offers everything from uncooled techless soar through to deep cooled down to minus 80 degrees. Lower dark current means longer exposure times which you will need for staring at subject matter, for example in astronomy or for NIR2 in vivo imaging applications. Raptor has been designing and manufacturing SWAR cameras since the very beginning in 2008. As you can see today, Raptor offers a wide range of both SWAR and visible SWAR cameras, offering a choice of resolution, pixel size, cooling, speed and readout noise. As well as standard off-the-shelf cameras, we also offer a wide range of custom options for our OEM customers. All the data sheets for these cameras can be found on our website. And if you're having trouble deciding or if you have any questions, please get in contact with us and we will be delighted to talk to you through the features and benefits of each camera. I've been working in the camera industry for almost 20 years and I still maintain I've yet to find the perfect camera that can tick all the boxes for every application. There are all these trade-offs in making a selection for your specific application. It may come down to optimum wavelength, resolution, pixel size, exposure, or integration time, how sensitive the camera needs to be, speed, as well as triggering, the quant quantity of data and the quality of data to be gathered, and the software integration. And then on the practical side, the size, weight, and power requirements, uh, and if any custom considerations need to be taken into consideration. And then of course, budget and timelines required. Each of these points is a determining factor on the SWAR camera selected. We understand that at Raptor and we have developed a wide range of off-the-shelf and custom solutions to meet almost every eventuality. At Raptor, we've seen a huge growth of interest in SWAR applications over the last five years. Traditionally, SWAR has been used in surveillance applications for low light and near nighttime imaging. But there's been a growth from scientific and industrial applications. I'm going to spend a lot of time over the next few slides discussing some of these applications where Raptor Square cameras have been used to solve problems and help people discover new ways of seeing. Okay, let's start with the first application, which is plastic sorting. Given our obligation to look after our planet, there's been a growing interest in recycling, especially plastics. Hyperspectral and multispectral techniques are now used to sort various grades of plastics. Each of these is a spectral fingerprint. We are working with OEMs now who have developed sorting equipment using hyperspectral imaging. PVC, tetra, polypropylene can all be identified and separated into different silos. These machines tend to run in 24-7 conditions and the line belt runs at seven, several kilometers per hour, so it requires a very fast, sensitive and rugged camera that will work in hot, dusty environments. The IL320 high-speed camera ticks all the boxes for this type of application. Mobile communications and data consumption have driven the need for higher bandwidth, faster speeds and lower latency. And with more people around the world consuming more data, especially in remote areas, the need for free space optical communication has grown. Essentially, this involves lasers for high bandwidth wireless communication links over long distances. These active free space optic transmission systems are relayed from ground stations to satellites back to ground stations again. Typically, lasers tend to be 1.06 and 1.5 microns and are used in adaptive optic systems to correct imaging systems for atmospheric turbulence. High speed square cameras ensure optimum beam alignment. Over the last five years, there's been a growing interest in monitoring our Earth from low orbit CubeSats. These fleets or constellations of miniature satellites have become very popular, mainly due to the lower cost associated with hardware and launching these fleets in a more efficient and cost-effective way than vehicles such as SpaceX. A lot of these CubeSats have eyes on the Earth looking at a variety of subject matter, from security and defense through to asset tracking oil and gas exploration, monitoring crops, fires, pollution, the list is endless. Most will have some sort of camera set up on board. 
and we've seen a big interest in swear in swear wavelengths. In fact, Raptor cameras have been on board several live missions. Our mill spec cameras are rugged and compact and ideal for LEO applications. This has given us a good base heritage and we expect this to grow in the coming months and years. There is a growing interest in solar energy using photovoltaic panels. We have all witnessed these solar farms springing up all over the world as a clean and efficient source of energy. Some of these farms are huge with several thousand panels covering a wide area. Damaged or low efficiency panels caused by the weather or by shorting can be hard to identify for an engineer to fix or replace. Drones are now a way to inspect panels. You can see in the image on the left a drone flying over a solar farm with a solar camera on board. You can see very clearly and easily cells that are damaged on the image on the right. A drone can cover a large area inspecting panels quickly and efficiently. Efficiently, with damaged cells automatically geotagged for an engineer to come out and later and fix. A sensitive solar camera such as the IL-642 enables this to be more be done more efficiently. You can read more about this on a recently published app note on our website. Silicon inspection is big business these days. It can be a challenging problem for silicon and semiconductor manufacturers in terms of pattern alignment, pattern defect inspection, and age, position, bonding inspection. During the manufacturing process, foreign particles and defects may, may appear on the top, bottom, inside, or in between the wafers. And as the thickness of wafers gets smaller, the backside defects are becoming more important to detect. They include trapped air, air pockets, micro cracks and other fine features caused by photonic emissions. It is important to find the location of these defects. They won't initially affect the chip's functionality, but they do end up affecting the chip's reliability. Silicon is an interesting property where it becomes translucent at wavelengths greater than 15, 1150 nanometers. Because of this property, two-dimensional focal plane array in-gas cameras are ideal for detecting wafer defects. In-gas cameras are capable of detecting light between 900 and 1700 nanometers in the visible and shortwave infrared range of the electromagnetic spectrum. The IL-1280 camera is an excellent candidate for this application, combining high sensitivity, large image area and high speed to allow for quicker inspection. And they are rugged and compact to stabilize cooling, ensuring reliability. In a similar way to solar panel inspection, scientists are increasingly taking to the skies to look at the remote sensing of vegetation. Using drones with embedded camera systems to derive well-established vegetation indices more efficiently than traditional biomass sampling. We have just published an application note citing a researcher in Germany who has used two IL-640 mini cameras to investigate these techniques. You can find this on our website. In terms of biomedical applications, we are seeing a growing interest in the fluorescent imaging in the second NIR2 window. Lots of dyes and markers are now being developed in the SWIR waveband. Carbon nanotubules and rare earth nanoparticles are showing strong promise in research. These markers adhere to cell structures and emit fluorescent signals that can be visible through tissue structures. In the image shown, you can see a cube of chicken tissue to act as a phantom structure. Various capillary tubes have been inserted into the phantom at different depths, 2 mm, 4 mm and 6 mm. Various swear enabled dyes are run through the tubes and you can see how well the Ninox camera performs relative to the bright field image. Again, you can read more about this on our on a research article uh, on our website. Let's look at the world of astronomy. Another interesting app note recently published highlights some nice images of the surface of Venus taken by Dr. Volta with an Enoch 642 visible swirl camera. Observations of wavelengths beyond one micron are very interesting here to observe the lower clouds of Venus through the infrared radiation that escapes from the planet through holes of lower cloud content at an altitude of about 50 kilometers above the surface. To conclude this presentation, 
Dr. Photonics is now a leading player in the store camera market. Our heritage and product knowledge and experience make us the best option for your store camera requirements. We have a good reputation for reliability, innovation and quality. Our flexibility and fast delivery makes us a very unique and attractive solution for our customers. Our levels of support and service mean that we are a trusted partner for many key labs. I look forward to your questions and to developing a relationship with you in the future to be your camera provider of choice. If you have any questions uh, about the presentation or any questions about square cameras in general, please visit our virtual booth at the Tonics West Digital Marketplace, where you can speak with uh, myself or some of my Raptor colleagues or you can contact us by e emailing us at sales at raptorphotonics.com. Thanks very much for participating in this presentation and I look forward to hearing from you.